What's that small guilt that haunts you? Part 6. Chill out and dive into the story. If you enjoy our vibe, don't forget to subscribe and share Thread Tonic with your friends. Account 1. When I was about 9 years old, I had a little poodle. One day I took him outside to pee, but then my mom called me from inside the house. I completely forgot about the dog and went to her. I never saw him again. Account 2. My grandpa was dying of cancer. I lived far away from him, so every time I saw him, he looked worse. On what I knew would be the last trip to see him, I decided that I wanted to hug him. Being nine at the time, I was terrified that cancer was contagious. So I gave him a handshake. A handshake. I hate myself whenever I think about it. Account 3. In seventh grade, I had moved to a new school and was in the popular crowd. The guys in the crowd would all gang up on this poor kid and pick on him all day, throw him against lockers, call him names, and just generally make his life miserable. The other girls and I would cheer them on. I never stood up for him, even though I knew what they were doing to him was wrong. I hate thinking about the pain he must have been in. I hate that I did nothing to stop it and even went along with it. If you're out there, Milton, I am so, so sorry. Account 4. That I almost failed out of college because I was lazy and didn't study or do homework. And my parents thought I was doing fine. I was brought before the board and the only reason I wasn't expelled was because my grandfather died the week before finals. Every other semester before, I went into finals behind on grades compared to the rest of the class. I would routinely calculate, I need a C plus to pass the class, B to get a C average, and a 98% to clear a B in the class with no curve. Luckily, I am an excellent test taker and essentially always got a fantastic grade on the final, then followed it up with an email to the professor that was essentially, I know I barely did any homework or just did poorly on it because I half-assed it all, but look how well I did on the exams, curve grade, please. This almost always worked. The semester in question, though, I bombed most of my finals due to stress and anxiety finally overtaking me. I got two D's as final class grades and was put on probation and brought before the Board of Deans. Really, my grandfather passing is the only reason I didn't get dropped from my major, even though I probably would have done just as badly if he hadn't. My last year and a half, I got my act together and earned at least A's in every class, but my GPA was permanently damaged. I managed to grab a pretty good job after graduating, though, so my laziness and procrastination didn't totally ruin my life. It could have gone a lot better. So heed my advice, early college goers and high school students who coast through your classes now because you are smart enough to half-ass everything and still get good grades. It gets harder, and you will be in trouble if you don't learn to study and do homework now because it can totally bite you in the ass to take it easy now. Account 5. I feel guilty about my relationship with my dad. I forgot to wish him a happy 50th birthday two years ago. I always call my mom instead of him when I need anything. Just because it's habit, something I got used to over the years. I'm not as comfortable talking to him as I am with my mom, and I absolutely hate it. I know that it gets to him too, but he won't let anyone know. I just hope he knows how much I love him, and how thankful I am that he is my dad. Damn, this gets me every time. Account 6. Just out of high school, I worked at a convenience store, usually on the night shift. During one shift, a co-worker found a wallet in the parking lot which contained about $600. He gave the wallet to our assistant manager who said, You guys want to split it? This was during the 80s and that was a lot of money back then. The other guy did and I reluctantly agreed. As we were closing up, the owner of the wallet banged on the door asking if we had found his wallet. The assistant manager said we had not and he returned to his car. I was taking gas readings so I was only a few feet from the car and could hear him arguing with his wife, girlfriend. She was screaming, I'm almost out of gas, what are we going to do? It was the dude's whole paycheck in that wallet. I went back inside and told the other guys, but they still didn't want to return it. I felt like shit. I still feel like shit for doing that. If I could find that guy today, I would gladly sign over a whole paycheck as retribution for being a fucking asshole. Account 7. I have always struggled with relationships with women. I've never been able to take one out, talk to them, or be romantic, etc. I've been told I'm hilarious and great to be around, but when I try to go out of my way to ask out a specific girl, it never ends well. Over the past year, I dated a foreign girl studying abroad here in the States. We started to talk, 
and we really enjoyed each other's company. Eventually, I asked her out, and we went on a number of dates. One evening, after I took her out to a nice dinner, we went back to her apartment, lay in bed, and watched a movie. After the movie, I tried to kiss her, but she rejected it and tried to tell me we were nothing more than friends. I told her after everything we'd been through that I knew she liked me, and she knew how I felt about her. After a couple of hours of talking while still lying together, she eventually admitted that she liked me a lot, but didn't want to be in a real relationship since she was going home soon and didn't want to attach herself to me, potentially hurting us both. Personally, I did not want to do long distance, so I agreed and apologized for pressuring her. A month later, it was July 4th, we spent the day together in another city about an hour away. Everything went great, until the fireworks started. I've always wanted to kiss a girl under fireworks, so I tried again, and she rejected me, citing the same reasons. Oddly enough, we became closer over time, and I thought she was really into me by now. After this, I became very emotional and lashed out at her on the way home. I screamed at her, cursed her out, and threw out every misogynistic term in the book. I was truly angry. I stopped talking to her after that. I refused to be strung along by a girl. Eventually, though, we made up and I apologized. She left, and we had a good final date before she did, and she ran up and gave me a big hug before I drove off. I know she still likes me, but due to distance, it just can't work, and it's pretty sad. I still regret that July 4th night, and I will never ever yell at a woman like that again. Ever. No matter what she's done. It's just a terrible thing to do. Account 8. About 16 years ago, my dad was in the hospital for some pretty serious issues. He didn't end up dying. Well, he did once on the operating table, but that's a whole other story. I was five years old and refused to go to the hospital to see him. Everyone in my family assumed I was afraid to see him like that, but in reality, I'm not so sure. I think I might have just been a selfish little kid. He didn't die, so it's a happy ending. But I still think about it and the fact that even today, not even I know why I wouldn't go see him. Account 9. There was this kid in my math class who always tried to talk to me. I would somewhat talk to him, but not much. He stopped coming to school, and then over Thanksgiving break, I found out he killed himself. I felt absolutely terrible and still do. Account 10. When I was a lot younger, maybe four or five, one of my mom's friends was babysitting me. She was on Weight Watchers and was very heavy, but she had already lost 20 LABs. When she came to put me to bed, I called her a fatty. Even though I was young and stupid, I immediately regretted it and could tell it hurt her. When I was about 11, she and my mom weren't close anymore, so I don't have any contact with her. I still feel bad and wish I had apologized. Account 11. On my fourth birthday, my parents were going to surprise me with a new bike. They had this whole ordeal planned out. Some kind of scavenger hunt or something. But the night before my birthday, I didn't go to sleep when I was supposed to and walked in on them putting my bike together, ruining their surprise. They thought it was hilarious, but when I realized what they'd been planning, I felt absolutely awful, like I took all their fun away. I know it's nothing compared to most stories, but for some reason, to this day, a small part of me still feels guilty about it. Account 12. Not being home when my mom died, she had cancer, and in the last weeks of her life, she slept almost the whole time and couldn't talk anymore, couldn't eat, couldn't see properly, and was sometimes confused. All the misery you can imagine and more. When it was clear she was in her last days, I got scared. I was afraid to go home from my boyfriend's house, so I stayed for another night. I went home the next day, nervous as hell, and when I came home, my dad told me it was best for me not to see her in the condition she was in at that time. I couldn't even imagine it being worse than the last time I saw her, so I went to my room. But I couldn't calm down, so I packed some clothes and had my boyfriend pick me up again. She died the next morning, which was a relief because of the severe pain and suffering she went through for so long. But to this day, I still wish she could reassure me that she was okay with my decision to run away when times were the darkest to be away from her at that time. I know she'd understand, but I want to know for sure. She and I had a great bond, by the way. She was my best friend. Account 13. In high school, I dated a guy. We dated from the end of junior year to close to the end of senior year. Towards the end, we got into a huge, gigantic spat. During the arguing, he yelled and asked why I never went to any of his improv shows. I didn't respond at the time, 
I had never thought it mattered to him, even though he was really involved in theater. I never went to a single show. There must have been about 30 throughout the year. When he brought it up, I could see how hurt he was in his eyes. It made me feel pretty bad to think of all those shows that I skipped out on, where he was scanning the audience for me to no avail. After that, I realized I actually had the ability to hurt people more than I realized, because I had pretty much always assumed the victim role. It was eye-opening, to say the least. Account 14. I went to an anime convention once. I noticed they had a room with console games, and more specifically, saw they had MW3. At the time, I had only played it on PC and was pretty good with FPS games in general. So I sit back and watch this guy play the game along with two cute ladies in cosplay. This guy is obviously trying to impress them by constantly talking about how great he is, despite constantly getting killed in the beginning and going on about how the game is overpowered and stuff. The ladies are annoyed that they keep getting killed, so I casually ask the guy if I can try. He denies it, claiming that I could break the controller and he'd have to pay for it. Fair enough, I just watch. This lady, on the other hand, lends me her controller, and I end up finishing the level in less than a minute. They are impressed. The guy gets quiet and immediately leaves. I never see him again at the convention. I think I ruined this guy's chance of getting a kawaii cosplay girlfriend. Account 15. I'm not sure if this is a small guilt or just the definition of guilt. I had really bad teenage years. I put my parents through hell. My family was perfectly loving and accepting. They gave me everything I needed. They were the best parents money could buy. Even with all that, I felt really alone and like no one wanted me around. I got bad grades, did nothing, stayed in my room all day, and did absolutely nothing productive. They just wanted me to do something, anything. Yet, being the little shit I was, I didn't. Several times I attempted to run away, and each time my parents found me, a couple of times with the police involved. Each time I broke my mother's heart. I saw her crying, but I didn't feel anything. If I could go back and just bitch slap sense into teenage me, I'd do it in an instant. I think beginning senior year is when I finally started to find myself and mature. I spent most of senior year driving around, going to the beach, and thinking about my life. I was am a really depressing person, but those are my own problems. I don't need to make more reasons to hate myself by inflicting pain on those I love. TLDR, I'm a terrible son. Small guilt? One does not simply measure guilt. 16. I was in an office building when I was 8, going to the top floor to see my dad where he was working. As I walked past an extremely old-looking man, he collapsed on the floor, gasping, Help! Help! I was so scared I ran right past him and went up the escalator. I learned later that he died. To this day, I feel like shit. His bulging eyes staring at me, his hand extending out towards me for help, and I just ran right past him. I could have saved that poor old man who probably had a family who loved him. Count 17. Last year on Thanksgiving was the last time I saw my grandpa who I was extremely close to. I didn't even bother getting up off the couch to say goodbye to him because I was taking a nap after all the food I ate and just assumed I would see him the next day. I wish I had gotten up and said goodbye. Account 18. When I was younger, I was at a Shriner Circus Fair type thing and saw a kid holding up a goldfish he had won. He had two of them and I had one already. Being the kid I was, I went up to him and asked if I could have it thinking he was giving it away. He handed it to me, being only a year or two older than I was, 10, 11, and I heard his mom say, Oh, well, I guess his sister's name won't get one. I felt really bad, turned to look at my dad. He nodded at me. But when I turned around, they were gone. We didn't even keep the fish. 